Thank you.
Good evening, everybody. I'm just going to let you know we're going to start our meeting a little bit late tonight. Uh, we have some of our children unloading on a bus right now, so when they're here, we'll um, get started. Thank you.
Good evening, everybody. We'd like to call this um, governing board meeting to order tonight. And at this time, I don't believe there are any changes to our agenda. And so I would need a motion to adopt our agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So it has been approved. So at this time, um, we would like to have a moment of silence. And then after our moment of silence. We will have these wonderful um, Jack students in front of us. They are going to lead us in the, in the Pledge of Allegiance in both English and in Spanish. So please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. So at this time, uh, we, I don't believe we have any call to the public, so we are going to m move to our special recognitions this evening, and our first one is our student um, showcase, Ms. Gata Jones. Good evening, Madam President, members of the board. This evening, we're happy to have t um, our Jack School Dual Language Program, and um, they're going to have... I share with us what they've been doing over the last couple of years. I'm going to now turn it over to Dr. Jerry Peterson and Carvalho. Good evening, Madam President, members of the board, Superintendent Sagata Jones, and the whole community here. Um, thank you for being here this evening. Uh, at Jack, we've had dual language in place for two years. These are our first graders at Jack, and they are here to perform a reader's theater piece for you. And their teacher, one of their teachers is Ms. Maria Munoz, and she'll give you some more information about that.
Gracias.
That's fine. I could hear what she said. She was speaking to someone. Oh. <laughs> Meaningful. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so before we leave, we want to thank that you are supporting us, parents that are here. Um, uh, this is a very neat group. They started in kindergarten. Now they're moving to first grade. And the goal is that they finish high school and beyond, being bilingual, biliterate. And that is the goal for these children. I think for being first grade, I think they did a very good job. Don't you think? Let's give him another round of applause. We would like to finish with a song that we hope you enjoy and also touches your heart to remember we are doing not only as teachers but also as students working very hard. This is a very rigorous program. 
English in the morning, Spanish in the afternoon, and the next day, same thing. So they work very hard. Some of them are reading uh, close to 400 words because they have to learn in English and they have to learn the, the ones in Spanish. And besides reading, and it is a lot of work. So we are going to finish singing for you, Remember Me. Do we have a computer? Thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't say it's working. <laughs> track number two. I love the hair. I love the hair. <laughs> Which one is it? <laughs> like the picture of me that uh, Madeline drew. These all want a new roof. <laughs> a new roof. Wow. <laughs> petitions. Your petitions. It's working? It's gone. Carpet. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Me gustaría que reconociéramos a Mrs. Sparks, mi compañera en crimen. Mrs. Sparks, thank you.
No, he can just use the lanyard. The lanyard for Mike. Give this to this to Mike. <laughs> Is it the bathroom one? <laughs> well, that was a fun performance. What more could we ask for just to have something like that? Well, we are going to continue uh, our fun this evening, and we are going to item 4B, which is our Just Because recognitions. Yes, Madam President, members of the board, um, each month we do our Just Because randomly select an employee in the district and a student. Our student could not be here this month, but we do have our employee, and we like to recognize our Just Because employee, Elizabeth Petronic from Sunset Vista Landmark Band teacher, if she would come forward. As you know, we, when we do the celebration, we go out live to the location, and we do have a video, so we want to show that video. And you are being honored with, you have a, a staff a T-shirt, our famous Imam cookies. You also do have a gift card, if you would like to open that up. Or we could do it by the surprise on your face. How's that? Dave and Buster. All right, thank you. All right, and Mr. Cummings, we have our video. Mr. Clark. Just Because Award, Aww. which is because, just because you work here in Glendale, and we oh, nice. uh, love that you work with our students. Oh, thank you. Here. So, <laughs> the superintendent could not be here today because she had an emergency, but she wanted to, you to be presented with this certificate. Aww. A signed one will be available to okay. you at the board meeting. We'd like you to come to the next, next board meeting next Thursday night okay. um, and be presented with a certificate. Awesome. Also, the Gusto Foundation would like to present you with a gift card at that board meeting. Oh my gosh. So we'd like we'd like to do a photo. Could we have her Sunset Vista and Landmark family come up if they're here and any other more gifts? <laughs> more gifts. <laughs> Even up to do our pictures. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
Well, we're glad we have teachers that can get awards just because. <laughs> it's nice. So we are moving on to 4C to our foundation recognition. Yes, Madam President, and members of the board, we'd like to recognize supporters and beneficiaries of the Glendale United, Uniting Students and Teachers and Others Education Foundation, which is GUSTO, and I'd like to turn that over to our GUSTO president, Mr. Mike Martinez. I think this thing is on. Yes, it is. Madam President, members of the board, uh, Superintendent Sagata Jones, thank you for letting me have a few moments of your time. I thought for sure I would be blacklisted from ever appearing at a Glendale function again after making you all sing at the Welcome Back uh, celebration at the Renaissance Hotels this year. So thank you very much for having me come back. Um, the foundation, we started this foundation, it almost seems like a lifetime ago. Things move very slowly. We are now at the point in our foundation lifespan where things can start moving a little bit faster. Um, and thanks to some specific and, and very generous help from uh, a number of community businesses, uh, as well as some donations from other people within the district and outside the district, uh, we've been able to sort of push our foundation forward uh, to, to, for example, sponsor the Just Because Award uh, that you just gave away right now. So congratulations for that. Um, I had a lot of fun picking out gift cards for that, and I had to think to myself, what is it things that I would like to do that I would like the gift card for? <laughs> And then I rethought it. I was like, no, what are things a normal person would like to do and get a gift card for? And so I went that route, um, went the safe route. So I hope you have a lot of fun. Take your family, um, play lots of games, eat lots of chicken wings. Um, so I wanted to, we wanted to officially recognize some of our, our, um, our donating vendors, our donating businesses here today, um, certainly because we wouldn't be here without them. We wouldn't be able to move forward without them. So we've had some um, fairly significant financial assistance from these, uh, from these vendors. So I have a couple of items that I'd like to present. So one of our first vendors that I'd like to present this, um, that display this check for, Mr. Joe Holcomb from Chase Construction. If you can please come up here. <laughs> Chase Construction was one of our early on boards able to get us going with our uh, $5,000 donation to help the foundation get us going. And you can see by some of the things we've been able to sponsor so far in the district, um, we've been able to take that money and immediately put it back to help further the missions and goals of the district. So thank you, sir. Uh, I look forward to cashing this and trying to fit this into the small vacuum tube container at the bank. So I want you to just hold on to that for a moment. You know, she said, she said they weren't bad for first graders and um, they're twice as good as I'll ever be. Um, our next giant check is going to be from Valley Schools. Uh, have Mr. Jerry Cipriano come up, please. Now, if I had to choose one person that we've dealt with that's really helped us get going, it would be Mr. Cipriano. Um, he's really helped us get going. He, he provided us the initial funds so we can make sure we get all the basic stuff out of the way, like our IRS filing fees and things like that. Uh, and I can say that because of him and because of this uh, generous start that we've got started uh, and for a total amount so far of $7,400 that uh, we are now an official 501c3 organization uh, and we are rolling full steam ahead. So thank you, Mr. Cipriano. <laughs> and I, I, do have, I do have one more and she wouldn't want me to show this, but I have the floor so I get to make the decisions. <laughs> Um, last two years ago, Red for Ed came along, huge push, everybody was out marching in the streets, beautiful to see, beautiful to watch. Uh, as part of the outcome of that Red for Ed, there was uh, reasons given throughout, throughout the state um, to teachers and staff members that were able to get going. And um, she didn't want anybody to kind of know this, so she really kind of kept on the down low, so she doesn't even know I'm doing this right now. Um, but our superintendent, Ms. Sagata Jones, donated the entirety of her raise to the Gusto Foundation to help us get going in a, not in in a, a very significant amount, over $12,000. It's 
so I'd just like to say thank you very much. Um, your money is well spent, I guarantee it. Uh, and you're going to see this money come right back into the district because that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to build those, build those alliances, build those relationships um, to get the business community involved in the district, and that's entirely what the entire foundation is about. Um, and that's all I have for you today. Thank you very much for your time. I look forward to seeing you again when I have more information to share. Yeah, well, thank you so much, and thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Oh, no, 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 this, this is mine now. We'll talk about that tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> At this time, um, also under Madam President, members of the board, because of the donations from our, our vendors, we're also um, able this past week to, we really wanted to just, um, as you know, the theme's been Radiate Kindness, and um, we wanted to do that. So we, what we did through um, those donations, the Gusto was able to provide us with um, a gift card for $250 to South, from Southwest Airlines where we randomly drew someone from each site to receive that. And then they were able to receive that. Some of them are here tonight. I would like them to come forward to take a picture with the Gusto uh, Foundation. And um, also, um, if, you're not, if I don't call your name and you're here, please come forward. So my understanding here tonight is from uh, IMS, uh, Nikki Kinsey is from IMS and she's the cells there. And please know that it's all employees, so uh, whether you're certified or classified, everybody comes in uh, to the drawing. The next one that we have is Mary Maines Dill. She's a signed fourth grade teacher. Um, is Janie Armenta here from Desert Spirits, Fed CCLs? Thank you. <laughs> Erica Fitzgerald, Sunset Vista Universal Preschool. <laughs> and do we have Lisa Drogmiller from Horizon, third grade? <laughs> Amber Pastorella from Discovery, first grade. Cynthia Poli from American Cells. Adrian, Tra Adrian Chavez from Mensendick, teacher. At this time, I'm also going to read the other recipients who could not be here. Christina Bejarano is a bus driver. Jennifer Mieta is admin sec uh, secretary for CNI. If you're here, please come forward. Keely Smith from Landmark, special ed assistant. Margarita Acosta is a Smith cleaner. Michelle, I'm going to, Ott, Desert Garden PE teacher. Colleen Rylett, Coyote Ridge AA. Lawia Ross, Challenger fifth grade teacher. Rachel Hernandez, South, second grade teacher. Guadalupe Cisneros, Jack, food service specialist. Gail Block, Burton AA. And Caitlin McLaughlin, North, seventh grade teacher. If you're here, please come forward. And Governing Board, if you would. And if uh, Mr. Martinez, if you would join them for a picture in the Governing Board as well. Thank you. Pardon me. And my donors, please, in the back, the vendors.
Also, Nikki Kinsey, would you please come forward? Nikki? Um, I would like for you to know that Nikki Kinsey um, received the Turn Food Dollar gift certificate, and she paid it forward to another uh, colleague that was able to fly her daughter home for the holidays. Thank you so much, Nikki. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> so we are going to move to staff recognition, and I'm going to read a letter, and it says, on behalf of the Board of Directors of the School Nutrition Association, the SNA, I would like to thank the Glendale Elementary School District for its support of at-large director Shannon Gleave, and currently actively serving as a volunteer leader for this organization. Associations such as SNA depend on the knowledge of commitment of its volunteers to help the organization achieve its strategic goals and continue to move the association forward. SNA is so fortunate to have someone as talented and hardworking as Shannon serve as a new national volunteer leader. They say there is a season and a reason for everything, and I truly believe that SNA is so fortunate to have a dynamic leader such as Shannon guiding us through and bringing enthusiasm to subjects that would not normally capture an audience. Our heartfelt thanks to her and the Glendale Elementary School District for her service to SNA, the members we serve, and the children of our members serve each and every school day. And this is from Pat, I guess, Montague, the CMEO. Are we Taking pictures? Are we taking pictures, Shannon? Shannon? Are you in here? Shannon, thank you for your service. Okay, we are now moving to the um, consent agenda. Do we have any items board members would like uh, pulled at this time? Seeing none, can I have a motion? I'll move to approve the consent agenda. I'll second. Okay, Mr. Aldama? Aye. Ms. Pimentel? Aye. Uh, Ms. Wilson? Aye. Ms. Bartels? Aye. And I vote aye. The motion passes. Okay, so now we are moving to number seven, which is our action item, the school year calendars. Yes, Madam President, members of the board, is recommend the governing board approve school year calendars for 2020-2021 school year and 2021-2022 school year as presented. At this time, we'd also like to recognize the calendar committee who consisted of the following members, Lindsay Hewitt Brown from a parent at American, Laura Hubble, teacher at Horizon, Gladys Payan, classified employee and parent, Norma Heidegge at services and parent, Tiffany Molina, principal, Samantha Moya, GEA and parent, and Jen Cummings, director. Do we have any comments on this? If not, we can have a motion. Madam President, I have a question. Okay. Our, uh, the last time we discussed this, we were trying to get in line with Glendale Union High School District. Were we uh, successful in doing that? Yes, we are eligible Glendale Union High School District. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Can we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the 
school year calendar for 2021 and 21-22 as presented. I'll second that. Mr. Aldama? Aye. Ms. Um, Pimentel? Aye. Ms. Wilson? Aye. Ms. Bartels? Aye. And I vote aye. All right, we can go to 7B, which is approval of payments made to staff. Yes, Madam President, members of the board, it's recommended the governing board retroactively approve payments made to staff for the 2012 through 2013, 2013 through 2014, 2014 through 2015, 2015 through 2016, 2016 through 2017, 2017 through 2018, 2018 through 2019, and 2019 through 2020 school year as presented. Based on recent actions from the Auditor General's Office, it has been recommended that the district go back seven years criminal statute, statute of limitations for approval of payments made to staff that may not have been specifically approved by the board. The district has created a list of payments made to staff that includes some of the following categories, and those are listed for you. As, um, we've as I have brought to your attention in the past and through board updates that once we attended a um, superintendent's conference in the fall, and this came out, um, out of the Arizona Auditor General's Office regarding the allegations against the Apache Junkin Unified School District, where um, those allegations read that um, the approval for compensation was not included in the um, employees' contracts, and district policy, policy requires that board establish salaries and benefits for our employees. So across the state, uh, legal counsel has advised us to go back to seven years and bring those for board approval. They vary anywhere from any time um, an employee who earns money above their contract. So that could be an administrator or a teacher or a classified staff member. Examples um, that we're most familiar with where most of us at the superintendent's level um, um, were caught by surprise is that they're requesting, for example, when we do um, the best is our title grants. And so when we pay employees to do um, tutoring or, or attend professional development, we pay them an hourly rate. So uh, we do that because we have that approved through our grants. However, the Auditor General would like any time we pay an employee any, anything that is not on their contract, it come for governing board approval. And so that is what we're doing tonight, and that's been the legal counsel for all districts across the state. Uh, so we will do that. We also it's um, put it onto uh, our pay scales, we we brought those last time that tells you what those hourly rates are, and that's the other recommendation as well, which we've, we've done and we've practiced that. But um, their recommendation, again, is to go back for seven years, and anybody that was paid anything that differed from their original contract amount, we need to go back and retroactively, retroactively approve those, and we've provided you with that information. Um, even though this happened late in the fall, as you know, when you received your board update, we have over 2,000 pages of documents. And so it's taken us that long to gather that information. If anybody, it is public record, if anybody would like to um, want to know those amounts paid for a particular employee, uh, they can request that through um, our, uh, the um, financial, uh, I want to say through, um, through uh, public records. And also we have all those in fi on file um, in the business office, um, how they were paid and when. Do we have questions at the time? Mr. Yeah, Obama? I have a question. Um, so, what, what is so two questions? What what is the total dollar amount uh, if we have them for these fiscal years? And then for each of those fiscal years, whatever that dollar amount was, was that budgeted, or how did that come to the board in our budget? So, Matt, uh, Madam President, members of the board, yes, first question is we do have those totals amounts. So for 2012-2013, it was $4,297,962.73. In 2013-14, it was $4,696,605.70. In 2014-15, it was $4,419,522.04. In 2015-16, it was $6,806,758.95. 2016-17, it's $3,724,451.84. In 2017-18, $3,968,000. Okay, let me start it again. $3,968,250.25. 
and 2018, 19, 4,575,265,529, and 2019, 2020, 20,084,047 cents as of current to date, with a total to be $34,573,291.27. And uh, that is all employees. The budgeted piece, and I'll turn that over to Mr. Berrigan, but the budgeted piece, for example, any of those that were out of our entitlement grants, yes, they were budgeted before because they have to be pre-approved through Arizona Department of Education. Some of those that may not have been budgeted before, for example, but could be a result of um, uh, budget savings, for example, um, let's take um, a, a crosswalk um, worker. And if that person is working as a crosswalk guard, but then, for example, we had a shortage of a cafeteria worker, then we would have paid them to do that position. And that may not have been budgeted, but there would have been a savings because we didn't pay the original person to be in that position. But I'll let Mr. Berrigan answer any other questions regarding that. Uh, Madam President, members of the board, uh, what this is what I would say. At the end of the day, whether it's a grant fund, if you look at the budget, and I can kind of maybe point it out a little bit in the budget just to kind of put it in perspective, but throughout your budget and through the AFR, those budgeted amounts, this or anything else, will be reflected whether it's an m &O, food service, or any of the various grant funds. And so part of the reason we do various revisions is to make sure that we're capturing those expenditures. Um, if if you, we were to reflect back in any of those years, you're going to find the aggregate amounts. You're going to find these big numbers embedded in 6,100, 6,200. Um, and that's where you would find those. And so that would be reflected overall. Um, in the budget for any given year that's reflected on this document. So to that extent, we, just to be clear, so for those who are watching in the audience that may, it's our public or employees, um, that's money we, we were planning to spend that we didn't spend over our budget. So this $4 million of one of these fiscal years isn't an overage of our budget. It's within our budget. It, it wasn't approved. It, it, sound, it looks, the optics are really, really bad, but the fact that the Auditor General said, this is how you rectify it, and we're doing that today, um, kind of takes away the fear a little bit. It, it, am I hearing that correct? Did I state that correctly? The Auditor General said, this is how you fix it, and you're good going forward? Uh, Madam President, members of the board, I think it was a combination of kind of the guidelines that they had put, um, or based on the assessment of an East Valley School District, coupled with our legal counsel's advice. So you're absolutely right in the sense that it's not that we overspent. And as the superintendent will point it out, we have our <clears> contracts. It <throat> doesn't matter whether you're classified, certified. Anytime, and you know, generally probably you're classified and you're certified when they're doing curriculum work and they're getting paid an hourly rate, because that specific additional wage is not reflected or identified in the contract, they feel it's problematic. And therefore, we're trying to make sure that we're ratifying that, and then I would imagine, I would imagine that our contracts, when they come before the board, probably in the next month or two, or whenever it is, they're probably gonna get a little lengthier to make sure that these type of categories are captured within the various employee contracts. So, you know, I think they're like a page and a half, they're probably gonna grow to two or three pages, just to make sure that we're capturing all the other areas in where an employee may receive additional compensation. And is that the fix going forward then? Is that how we're yes. going forward? That's been legal counsel, again? yes. Mm -hmm. So do some then get like an addendum to their, to their contract that uh, if they are to be paid an additional amount for the whole year, um, or at least for half the year maybe, um, coaches or? Some of those structures we already have in place, but for example, where it's, where it's going to have to be the um, or any other uh, compensation. For example, if you decide, right, currently the practice is that if you're going to take professional development or you're going to do committee work, we won't know that until those people volunteer for committee work or they're going to attend a professional development. So that verbiage will be crafted with legal counsel and what that looks like, and that's really gonna be based on the salary schedule and what you can earn for a list of all the positions that we approve for them to earn additional <clears throat> So the, the money that is budgeted, um, is there any ever money left over? Is it just roll over? And what do you do? Uh, Madam President, members of the board, yes, for entitlement, for example, um, that money is allocated um, across the schools receive the allocation off the entitlements. And if there is any money that is not spent, then that comes back into uh, the carry um, over for the, the district. Mm -hmm. And then our 
then we reallocate um, where those funds can be expended because that money you can, as you know, with the budget, even in your titles, you can only carry over so much money. Mm -hmm. And then this year, just to, we already approved, I think our last board meeting, the pays, payments that are going out this year, so we don't have to do any more like addendums for the, the rest of the year just by the vote that we did, I think it was last month, for the different um, stipends and things that we, we have going on. What? Go. Uh, Madam President, members of the board, there could be potentially additional stipends because we kind of threw that or extra duty pay, whatever the term you want to use, uh, could occur between now and the end of the year. So we'll be mindful to make sure that we're kind of catching up to those. But I think what I, what I want to just add is to the, what the superintendent said. Yes, these monies, and they're coming from various funds, so they may have restrictions, they may not. So just keep in mind that these are various funds throughout the district's many funds that it has access to. So I just want to make sure that you're fully aware that it's m &O, it's food service, it's Title I, it's all those other grants lumped together just to give you that total dollar amount. Um, and then unused monies roll over. All right, if we don't have any further questions, then we need a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the payments made to staff over the school years listed. I'll second. Mr. Aldama. Um, I have a, just another comment, or not comment, but question, if I may. Go ahead. Um, look, I, I, I'm, I'm okay with, with finding something like this or bringing it to our attention and then we bring it to the board. Um, this is the first I've heard of it, and so when I seen it, I was just the red flag, and I was extremely concerned about it, very, very worried about it, so I called the office today to ask Mr. Baragan uh, some questions about it. And, I remain very concerned about it. So my last question is, how did we fail to catch it and had to depend on the uh, Auditor General to find it or something happened at another school district? How did, it, how did we miss that? Mr. Or Madam President, members of the board, um, how, as it came up from another district, and, and we're not the only district with this, where it came up where the, and now I believe there's two um, superintendents who um, it was, determined or it was found that they had paid um, administrators, I believe, more than what their contract was. So to make it simple, uh, how I understand it when it was presented to me was, for example, as a superintendent, you have the right to, um, you can in, um, give raises to your employees, right, or, what, or pay them stipends. Um, it, sta it states in the statutory what your rights are. So what happened was apparently some superintendents gave raises to certain employees in large amounts. So that was the first red flag because they didn't have the authority to do that. They had the authority to recommend those, but they don't have authority to approve those. The board has to. So then when it came up that the board hadn't approved it, then it was, well, the defense was, well, there's a lot of things you don't approve. You don't approve, for example, and these are the things that weren't approved. If there is, and I guess the most simple one to say is if you're, um, Choose any employee, I guess. I'm going to go back to if you're a crosswalk guard and you're doing crosswalk dirty and I, and duty and I have a cafeteria aide that's out and I need someone to cover, I'm going to say, please go this, do this position. Now I've just paid you more. So there was different scenarios. It came up with title. The one that was most um, caught superintendents off guard was, well, we don't take our um, Title I um, extra duties to the governing board. For example, we pay probably about $1.2 a year in um, extra duty for titles, but we didn't take that because it's approved through the grant procedures. So nobody was taking, I'm, I'm not aware of any district that was taking that. And so that's when it came about it. Even though the allegations were against, you were giving raises to people, um, that they, when they began to dig deeper, it was no, it's, you cannot approve any, or an employee cannot receive any other compensation that the board has not approved. So that's where it came from. Um, it wasn't that they were looking at who's not doing that in the sense it was the raises. People were be given, they were given in the amounts of, you know, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollar raises without the governing board knowing. Yeah, and, and so I, when they dug into it, they said, well, the governing board doesn't know about these other ones because they didn't come as single items. They came through uh, either grant expenditures or, or, you know, when you look at the budget, it's, everything's budgeted for, um, 
positions, and if we have shortage of those positions, positions, then we covered with other staff, and they earn more money, yet that wasn't approved. Yeah, these aren't over-exuberant payouts. I get it. Um, is there something, because I'm, I'm still iffy on voting on this thing tonight, do we have something from the Auditor General that says this vote tonight satisfies this, we're good? No, that doesn't, that's, that's I, not... I, that does not exclude us from the Auditor General coming in and, and saying that um, we've uh, paid people without governing board approval. No, the recommendation. What I'm, saying. what I'm saying is if we vote I today and, and it passes, the majority passes it, that sounds like it satisfies and solves it. But is that from the Auditor General saying if you vote tonight and you approve this now, going back all those seven years, does that satisfy the Auditor General? It may, and do we have something that states that? From our, from our presentations from the legal counsel, um, they, the recommendation is you do that, statutorily go back seven years. The recommendation from counsel to me was to go back three years from the time I was superintendent. However, I went back seven years because of the board, um, because statutorily you were, members of you were here for seven years. So I, my decision was to go back seven years so that they could see if the Auditor General came in to do an audit with us or any findings, they could say that with good faith we went back and tried to correct those things that we hadn't taken before. So the answer is, so thank you for that, but the answer is no, we don't have anything from the Auditor General that says this is what satisfies our office. Madam no. President, members no. of the board, what I would say is what the superintendent just mentioned, it was the guidance and direction of legal counsel to move forward as an attempt to rectify or remedy those payments yeah. or not do anything and it was then the actions of this board if it were to be um, an approval tonight then that's based on our legal counsel and that's who we hold accountable if this comes up later as it was the wrong thing to do correct okay. are you ready to vote yeah right. that wasn't a vote what is your vote? <laughs> <laughs> just to be uh, So I, I have a, just quite a bit of, of reservations on this. I really do. Um, knowing that our legal team has given us that advice, if this comes back to haunt us, then I as an individual board member am going to hold our, our um, uh, legal team, uh, who's not an employee, who's a hired attorney, accountable. Uh, I will vote. I, with some reservations, that the attorney has given the guidance. So, I. Ms. Pimentel? I. Ms. Wilson? I. Ms. Bartels? I. I vote I. Motion passes. Okay, we'll move on to item C, which is the expenditure budget revision. Yes, Madam President, members of the board, it's recommended the governing board approve the 2019 2020 expenditure budget revision as presented, and Mr. Barragan and Ms. Carveo will be sharing that with us this evening. Uh, Madam President, members of the board, uh, we're going to kind of do this co-presentation. She'll take the lead, and then I'll chime in. So I'll turn it over to Ms. Caravello. Good evening, Madam President, members of the board. Um, we're going to review the revised one budget um, after our 40th day ADM was um, put out by the state. We did notice that we had a 434 um, ADM loss from our adopted budget projection. So that did uh, result in a decrease of 2.9 million to our revenue control limit. And with that, the override amount is tied to the RCL and that resulted in a $400,000 loss. And our budget balance carry forward 
did increase as we closed up the uh, FY19 books. We did have additional monies roll over and that was an increase of 900,000. So the overall um, adjustment to our budget is $2.4 million in loss. Uh, Madam President, members of the board, when we looked at the 100th day last year, we, we closed the year with 11,335 students, and you can see that on the slide far right. We anticipated, because of the demographic study, which we you know that was presented to you, we did anticipate a decrease in enrollment. We anticipated a reduction of about 212. However, with the 40th day count, which is in October, we lost an additional 434. So when you look at the 100th day, which is about that third week in January, and, and that's what the payment is based on. Um, so you're looking at the prior year to where we are now, it's a loss of 646 students. That's pretty significant. And so what we wanted to do is the far left in 2001, we had 11,323 kids. Based on the 40th day report, we now have 10,689. So just to kind of put it in perspective, we thought it was an important visual for for you, for the community, and for the various stakeholders to understand that, that we're smaller now than we were in 2001. And so that should be very alarming. There has always been discussion about the carry forward. And I think uh, to uh, board member Smith has always asked about current year funding or has always made that or has always wanted to highlight during these budget discussions or budget revisions. So we thought it was probably good for you to see historically, at least going back to 2010, what that budget balance carry forward has looked like. And so you can see just what that represents in a dollar amount and what that represents in a percentage. So the carry forward is then really divided by the revenue control limit to determine that percentage. But what I want to point out, and, and it can get a little tricky, so if you look at 2020, and it shows $2.7 million and carry forward, that's what's on page seven, but remember that's money left over from the prior year. So while it's reflected in 2020, that money's coming from, specifically out of M&O from the prior year. So you can just kind of see that in 2016, and remember that at the end of 2016, the legislature removed the carry forward limit, which used to be 4%, to try to help provide some level of flexibility to school districts since we were now required to implement current year funding. So you can see what it's been from 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, you're really starting to see that dip. I, I just don't believe that we're gonna have these surprises and in, in, in healthier carry forwards like we have in the past because of this. So I think it's important, and Valerie will reiterate, just to help you understand and help the various stakeholders understand what's happened. And this is just a summary from um, the first initial page that I talked about. The decrease in our ADM did cause a decrease to our RCL of 2.9 million. Our increase to, or I'm sorry, our decrease to the override, which is attached to the RCL, and then our increase um, with that money that did carry forward left us with that deficit of 2.4 million. And this is our unrestricted capital budget comparison from our adopted budget over to the re first revision. Um, our budget balance carry forward in capital was also healthier than expected and our interest remained the same and as well as the RCL did not change and as well as the Prop 123. So the overall adjustment was only recognized for that um, budget balance carry forward that we had. That's the difference from the adopted to the revised. And perhaps we should probably go back a little bit and just kind of explain what we had to do. So we, you saw a decrease in the MNO budget and it's a net decrease of $2.4 million. So I'd like to kind of take you back to June and July where we talked a little bit about having some contingency plans for a decrease in enrollment. Now, if you ask me, I would never have guessed that we would have lost 646 students. The demographic study did not project that. 
But what's also important to understand is we had competition just pop up. So when we did that analysis, we weren't aware of that competition. So those are just important factors. So we did create some buffers initially in m and to account for some of this, but we also do, had to decrease in various areas, which I think they're on your agenda item summary sheet, to try to reduce it by that 2.4. So just to kind of recap, the district additional assistance formula does call for about 5.1 in revenue. Um, this is, I believe, the second year that the legislature has started to restore capital funding. So they took, or we didn't receive, 1.6 we used about 3.4. 3.4 million is available in the formula. And again, just to kind of put it in perspective, from 2009 to 2020, we've lost about $41.1 million and about 38.1 is specific to capital, and I think you guys have heard it. Where to put it in perspective, you could probably have built two schools with that. Hey, Mr. Baragon. Yes. So on the, the capital this year, it's not... Going, we're not getting an increase, correct, uh, according to like the, the financials that we've heard so far this year that it's just going to be, they've been restoring it, but this year wasn't it not, it was just going to stay steady just with inflation? Uh, Madam President, members of the board, I think there's going to be discussion happening next month about what that restoration looks like. I think there might be an opportunity to get capital restored um, where I think it was going to stay flat mm -hmm. because of the rainy day fund or the surplus in the state budget, I, I think that there's a probably a good opportunity that we can hopefully get some of that district additional assistance restored at a faster rate, therefore actually having an increase this coming year and we're not staying flat. So while we're decreasing, plan, you're getting more per pupil. But the current plan was to stay flat. The current plan does call for it to stay flat. Again, you know, just kind of want to reiterate, because of current year funding, there are no more legislative financial safeguards. I think a year after current year funding, they said if your enrollment decreases, you're going to default to the prior year to kind of keep you whole. You know, that's no longer the case, and it hasn't been for several years now. So again, as we decrease, we have to make those adjustments in real time. Capital funding for this year did increase, and as you saw in the previous slide, it generated about $1.6 million in capital that we didn't have in the prior year. You know, just depending on where that enrollment is, and that does have an impact or may have an impact on those other grants. Uh, and, you know, you've seen, you know, a good reflection or proof of the marketing is what's right behind you, and you're seeing that, you know, the staff at the direction of the superintendent has made us visible in the various community. We'll, we will be there Saturday again for the parade. So we're out there and we're fully aware of the competition. The demographic study, it's ongoing and that will continue. Just kind of so that everyone knows the classroom dollars as we're losing students, we're gonna show a decrease in classroom dollar spending. If you, if, if I may, just jump to where it says inefficient in its operations. If you even look in July when we presented this, I initially had it appears for uh, it appears that the district will be inefficient. I removed that because I do believe in our current structure. By not doing anything, we have now we are inefficient. We're no longer appearing. We are inefficient because of the decrease in enrollment. And as you guys well know, the minimum wage does increase from $11 to $12, and I believe, if my memory serves me correctly, it's about $67,000 that will hit us January 1st, um, and that creates salary compression. You know, we've talked about this, especially as we sold bonds. Investors and rating agencies and our financial advisors are looking at all this information to, de to determine our credit worthiness, and so, you know, this is something those bullet points are nothing new. They should be familiar to you. Uh, and so we have to just be fully aware of these things to, you know, to operate efficiently. Uh, Madam President, members of the board, that concludes our presentation. And I'm happy, we're happy to answer any specific questions that you may have. All right, do we have questions from the board? I have, because I know this is the budget revision, but I think uh, in the near future, we need to be sitting down and you know, identifying ways that we can actually generate revenues. 
because we're going to continue to lose based on our demographic study and our competition. Unless, unless we have, you know, we've got a, a, a great superintendent here that's, you know, pushing our brand out there, but we still have to make sure we've got those resources in place for those kids. What I would add is that in order to increase revenue in a way that really truly keeps our head above water, the only true source of revenue is increasing enrollment. So I, I think it would be irresponsible for me to ele not to state that, that you know, we can find advertising, you can market, you can put signs on school buses. That's not gonna generate really $3 million because that's really what we lost as a result of the lower enrollment. However, because of a higher carry forward, because of some anticipation, the net difference really is 2.4. Um, so I think that's really important. Um, no, I know. First and foremost, we've got to have we've got to have our students. But. What I also want to point out, if you look at your agenda summary sheet on the bottom, it says that because of our situation, because of the decrease in enrollment, we're going to revise the budget at least one more time before May, so that you can see the fluctuation up or down between the you know between now and the hundredth day so that everyone can be fully aware of, of where we are financially, and, and there are no surprises. So we thought it was important, and we, we would hope that in February we do another, a revise number two. I would hope that we don't have to revise again until May, um, but we're gonna really be monitoring the budget on a weekly basis, just because I do believe, we do believe that it will be tight. Any other questions at this time? All right, well, thank you for your presentation. It's not as good as singing from first graders. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can we have a motion? Make a motion to adopt the 2019-2020 expenditure budget revision. I'll second. Ms. Pimentel? Aye. Ms. Wilson? Aye. Ms. Bartels? Aye. And I vote aye. The motion passes. All right, well, let's go on to the, the next thing, our bus driver shortage. Yes, Madam President, members of the board, um, the Governing Board Administration will discuss the bus driver shortage impacting the district's transportation department. As you know, uh, Glendale Elementary School District, along with other uh, districts across the state, we are experiencing a bus driver shortage. And our bus drivers are working extremely hard, and we appreciate what they do every day. But the bottom line is, you know, we are running over the last 17 days, there have been 217 delays um, because of, we are a shortage of our drivers. So we're averaging about 12.76 routes a day on a daily basis that are running, running behind. As of today, we are um, six, we have six unfilled driver positions. So that um, impacts that as well. Um, what we've We've uh, really hit the um, advertising for uh, positions. We have them on electric billboards. We have them in the newspapers. We have them on radios. And we're getting ready to send a communication next week right before winter break to our families, letting them know that we are working on this. Um, transportation has worked hard to uh, re-tier and re-tier and re-tier again and again every time uh, we have a delay or every time we have a shortage. Um, so the current staff, we appreciate what they're doing. They're running ragged. Um, the discussion, um, we've done what we believe is our best to get out there and market for uh, bus drivers. What we have found, um, we did some, um, in HR, Debbie Valdez looked at what we're paying our bus drivers were significantly lower uh, than surrounding districts, and that's a factor. We know that we've had bus drivers leave just for an increase of 25 cents, you know. Some of the surrounding districts pay up to 3 to $4 more an hour than we do, and then we're also competing with the city that's paying about $20 an hour. Um, so the, our, we've looked at um, increasing um, what that would look like and what that amount would be if we increased our driver's salaries. All of our drivers currently are benefited, so that's not the issue. It's the hourly rate. And of course, we know when we do that, then we talk about that discussion we need to still have about decompression of salaries. So how do we do that at the same time? 
I do know that I'm very concerned about, uh, you know, the toll it puts on our drivers, the toll it puts on the transportation department, the inconvenience it puts on um, our families, the inconvenience it puts on our teachers. Our teachers' uh, schedules have been changed uh, daily at times, whether they, they plan for their day and the morning run is late, that impacts them. If the afternoon, if it's late, then it impacts staff, you know, administrators and teachers as well because they're staying back to, to watch kids and they have to plan for different things for kids. So um, while we did our best effort to advertise, I think the only way that we hope that we can see a change is by to bring back in January an increase and pay for our transportation drivers so that we can retain them. Um, as our community has been very patient with us. Our teachers and administrators, of course, have worked very hard and do, any, do anything we ask for them. Um, but at some point, I, I'm concerned about um, losing students because we can't get them to school and it's inconvenience. Um, we do a great job about telling them on an auto dialer that it's 30 minutes late or 45 minutes late. Um, I'm going to go back to if I was a parent and I'm a grandparent and if my child was going to be 30 minutes late and I had a, another job to get to or if I, my child needed to go to baseball practice or football practice or piano lessons, that has impacted their lives. And so while I appreciate them being very supportive and patient with us, um, we need to really have that conversation about increasing their hourly rate if we want to uh, retain them. I would also be very concerned as a parent that if my child was missing 45 minutes a day of daily instruction, what impact that's having on their education as well. So, um, so any thoughts, questions that we can answer for you? I know Mr. Berrigan has worked hard, Ms. Valadez, uh, Dr. Peterson and Carvalho on, um, we've sat and sat and discussed what we can do. Mr. Cummings has done a remarkable job getting out there on all the billboards that he has access to um, to help promote it. but. Unfortunately, we still are not recruiting those, and, and my guess is we're not going to recruit them with the, the hourly rate that we pay them. I know at one of our conferences, um, the ADE had come up with some uh, suggestions, or they were looking at different ways that they could recruit. I think one of them was working with the uh, Department of Economic Security uh, for those people that are out of work and um, seeing if they could uh, you know, redirect them and retrain for something such as bus driver. Have you heard anything from that been at all? Ms. I have not, Mr. Berrigan. Mm -mm. Madam President, members of the board, I have not either. Mm -hmm. And then my other question is, um, where do these other districts get their money to, I mean, they're, I know they're losing, some of them are losing uh, children as well. So where, how it could. They, Madam President, members of the board, it could be that they are starting salary was always higher than Glendale starting salary. It wasn't, some are increasing. Uh, we've seen some of them do an increase. They've talked about that at the superintendent's level, but some of those could have just been for several years at that higher rate than ours, and we found that to be true as well. Um, you know, it's when we sit and talk as superintendents, because we've even had conversations about our neighboring districts, hey, can we, can we drive each other's kids? You know, those conversations to help. And we just don't have enough drivers to do that. But it's, it's really hard when you look at the sheet and say, well, if I give you 25 or 50 cents more, then I've just caused an impact on another district. And that doesn't always set well with me, you know. But at the same time, um, it's a shortage. I think we need to think about um, what we can do to, to retain our own. And um, sometimes, you know, it isn't about the dollar amount, but when um, it's significantly lower and we have families that, you know, you, you, you need to pay bills and you need to feed your families, then the hourly rate becomes very, very important for them. And we haven't had the discussion about staggering our start times or to help with this? We talked about staggering start times. That would not be the recommendation during the middle of a school year to do that. That would be a massive overhaul. And then you're talking about that also in, um, you would have to do start times and end times differently, which impacts teacher contracts as well because their day changes. So we'd be disrupting that as well. So um, is that a conversation that we need to have about um, start and end times for the 20, 20, 21 school year, absolutely. We've started those conversations, but it would not be the recommendation of administration to do that at this time. How many, how, how many schools do we have that uh, have just walkers? 
Mr. Berrigan? Yeah, and Chris will have to correct me if I'm wrong. I know that uh, Smith is a walker. I believe Burton's a walker uh, or walking to school. Burton has buses. And Discovery. Seven, and Discovery. And Discovery. Yeah. So that's a major change in transportation, I mean, mm -hmm. of routes and things. So the, we would like to bring back in January um, a recommendation for an increase in pay. All right, if you guys don't have anything else, let's move to our future meetings. So it looks to me, so in January, we want to add the bus driver thing on our January 9th meeting. Yes. And then it looks like February, we probably want to add a revised budget on here somewhere, either yes. the 6th or the 20th, and then also for May. Yes. Any other topics? from board members. All right, so nothing else. So we can move on to our summary of current events. Ms. Sagata-Jones. Yes, Madam President, members of the board, it's an extremely busy time, an exciting time of the year. We have lots of things occurring. First of all, I'd like to recognize Challenger and Desert Garden schools for their beautiful displays on the back. It's always nice to see those. So thank you so much, Challenger and Desert Garden. I'd like to recognize um, all staff members who have, par who have participated in the Adopt-A-Kids and board members who have participated in the Adopt-A-Kids program. We've adopted 40 families and we've been able to impact 150 um, family members or, or students. So thank you for those donations. Again, uh, last Saturday, um, we had the celebration of Related Arts downtown. I'd like to thank Educational Services um, and all of our auxiliary departments for their work, the teachers, the students, the parents, the community, all those that partici participated in that. It was a great event, and it's a great way for us to really weave our story into the community and uh, let them know that Glendale Elementary School District does have the best teachers and students in in the state, so we're always happy to do that. So we thank all of our teachers and students for their work. Um, I would clap, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we also had the privilege on Sunday at the Cardinals game, Sunset Vista, Sign Horizon, and, and Discovery Girls um, flag football teams were able to play during halftime. We have the largest girls flag football team in the West Valley, so it was uh, exciting for those um, to be there and to play. And um, we were on the billboard many times. Thank you um, for all those coaches out there that worked hard. And uh, Mr. Cummings, thank you for getting out there and snapping all those wonderful pictures you displayed for us. So thank you for that. <laughs> we have a lot of winter performances. Again, Mr. Cummings has those on Facebook. Um, Saturday, 8.30, we, have, uh, we will be participating in the hometown uh, Christmas parade. Uh, we're excited about that. This, our, our theme is Tis the Season to Be Kind. I've been gone a few days, so I don't know if it's changed, but it's still Tis the Season to Be Kind. I'm, su I'm assuming I need to go look at that tonight and make any changes by Friday night. <laughs> and so, but we are so excited about that. They did send me some pictures, and um, it looks wonderful, so thank you so much. We also have um, very exciting, also, we had uh, last night at the ADA Oellis Conference for English Language Learners, we had two of our students, one from Challenger was the, success, the, the school success story of the year from Challenger, and then also we had a runner-up uh, from Desert Garden, and we will be recognizing those students in the, at the January uh, board meeting, so that's great recognition. Thank you to those students and teachers for doing that, and it's incredible in language acquisition for your support in that. Uh, we also look forward to ASBA, Dr. Louis Lafitte, and his department will be presenting at ASBA, and they will be presenting about social emotional needs of students and families and how we can support our families. So um, much excitement, a lot of things going on. Um, so I truly, truly um, 
Again, my honor to serve as your superintendent. Uh, I appreciate, I'd like to publicly thank educational services and the executive team during my absence during this most difficult time of my life, and I appreciate everything you've done. Thank you to the principals and assistant principals out there with your support and kind words. I appreciate that, and um, I can't tell you enough how honored I am to be your superintendent. Thank you. It's time for our governing board report. Ms. Pimentel. Um, I would just like to let the Jack students know I will remember them. That was <laughs> such a wonderful performance, and I love this song. But I think um, just hearing them and, and they're reading in English and Spanish, they're not just speaking English and Spanish, but they're reading, and so they're completely literate, and I think that's wonderful. Um, the transportation issue is just difficult so um, thank you for really tackling that and look forward to doing that in January uh, and look forward to seeing everybody at the Glendale hometown parade we had a really great time last year and um, and I mean that as a whole district because the we I'm gonna say we when I say we I mean everybody else because they decorated everything they prepared everything and they put months and months of planning into it so I hope I see everybody out there um, and lastly, happy holidays to everybody. If you're staying home, uh, enjoy yourselves. If you're traveling abroad, be safe. If you're driving, flying, trains, anything. But happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, whatever you do. Ms. Wilson? Um, yeah, just uh, uh, to piggyback on the dual language program, I just, you know, we're so proud of the program at Jack and at Horizon. Um, you know, the kids are just uh, coming along really well, and I know my granddaughter is in the dual language program, and, and uh, she's in the second year, and I just see, you know, such great progress, and it's just a great program, something we should really be talking up a lot, and, and I'm sure we do. Also, it just kind of reminds me of the wonderful teachers that we have at our schools, and of course, um, all the classified as well. Yeah, that um, transportation is definitely, a, you know, uh, issue that uh, is not fun to tackle, uh, but it has to be. I think we all have to uh, look at it as something that ne needs to be done. Um, one other thing I forgot to mention was the Thanksgiving dinner that uh, I attended. That was um, really, it was so successful. It was so well organized. I was just very impressed, and um, I got to serve food for a little while, and, and everybody was so appreciative, and, and it was just, you know, a lot of fun. So, um, Next year will be, you know, great too. Um, winter performances are going are going good so far from what I've seen, and um, it's just a heavy time of year. I hope everybody just takes a deep breath, and you will make it through this next week. Um, you know, with the kids getting all hyper, and uh, I'm sure that they are. Um, but have happy holidays, Merry Christmas, however you celebrate, and um, be safe. And so, okay. well, Miss Bartes. Oh, I'll. Skip holidays for a moment. We um, ha were able to take 10 students to compete with the uh, Lego League Robotics last weekend. They have some reflecting to do. They did some changes on the fly. Some worked out, some didn't. But it, all of them came back you know, excited about what it was and it, all of them wanted to do it again next year. So that was like encouraging right there. Um, I also want to add to everybody, you know, please have a wonderful holiday season, you know, take the time off, enjoy the family, friends, you know, just breathe, <laughs> and we'll see you back in January. I'm just going to ditto what everyone else said, <laughs> you know, Jack was great, <laughs> it is fun, and I'd like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a nice break, and at this time, I'd like a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.